Corruption allegations, anti-government protests and a ban on social media, they all amounted to nothing in Turkey as the AK party only increased its popularity at the polls. Were these local elections appointed for the future? And is the Turkish Prime Minister looking more like Erdogan the Invincible? This is Inside Story. Hello everyone, I'm Kamal Santa Maria. It is rare that we are as interested this much in local elections, but in Turkey it was much more than that. This was, for all intents and purposes, a popularity vote for the Turkish Prime Minister. And for a man who's been challenged on the streets and online as much as he has, Recep Tayyip Erdogan's done pretty well. His ruling Justice and Development Party, the AK Party, swept to victory in municipal polls giving Erdogan some welcome momentum should he choose to run for president in August. Remember, for the first time, voters will directly elect the head of state in Turkey. As for this vote, well, with virtually all the ballots counted, the AK parties won a resounding 45% of the vote. Uh, the main opposition, the Republican People's Party, got around 30%, and the Nationalist Movement Party just over 15%. You embrace Turkey's new struggle for freedom. Thank you. You embrace the great Turkish ideals and goals. I thank every one of you. You embrace your own will, your own future, politics, your party, your prime minister. I offer all of you my infinite gratitude. Omar Saleh is in Istanbul covering events for Al Jazeera. He's been explaining what this result means for Turkey's prime minister. Well, for Erdogan, it means a big victory for him because he's been at the center of a huge corruption allegations. His critics say that he's turned into a dictator who's been silencing dissent and blocking access to Twitter and YouTube. Of course, the prime minister denied all allegations, saying his enemies were behind the smear campaigns aimed at his government. The results of uh, these local elections will embolden now Erdogan to pursue what he called those members of the what he described as the parallel state aimed to topple his government. What well, these results also mean for the opposition, some argue that they have failed to capitalize on the anti-government sentiment since last summer, that reference to the Gezi Park protest and also the corruption allegations. Though uh, officials from the main opposition party, the Republican People's Party, say they were very close in winning the capital, Ankara, and they didn't uh, do really bad in Istanbul. Simply said, those results will leave Turkey deeply divided ahead of presidential elections in August and general polls next year. Right, lots to talk about, as there always is with Turkey. So let me introduce our guests for today in Ankara. First of all, is Taha Ozan, who's a political analyst and president of the SETA Foundation for Political, Economic and Social Research. In London, Fadi Hakura, a Turkey specialist at Chatham House. And joining us from Istanbul is Barcin Yunant, who is the op-ed editor for the Hurriyet Daily News. We thank you all so much for your time. One of the points I tried to make on air on the day of the elections when I was working uh, on news on Al Jazeera was to say that, yes, protests and, and, and Twitter and YouTube and all these things have been big in, in Turkey, but we have to always remember that the AK party does have support. And I think, and Fadi, why don't I start with you in London, I think this vote pretty much proves that, doesn't it? It does show that Prime Minister Erdogan did achieve a resounding victory uh, of 45 percent uh, of the uh, nationwide uh, vote. That's primarily due to the people's perception, the public's perception of the state of the Turkish uh, economy. However, I think the key fact, and not many people have pointed out, I think the reversal of Prime Minister Erdogan's popularity has already begun. This is mm -hmm. the first election where Prime Minister Erdogan has lost votes due to domestic considerations. And that indicates that, his, uh, he, that he has reached his peak, which was 50%, and his decline, albeit gradual, has already started. Taha Osan, can I bring you in and get your reaction on that, the idea that this is actually the start of, what, or what do we say, the, the beginning of the end of, of Recep Tayyip Erdogan? Yes, I mean, uh, this is your media reality. You keep saying it <laughs> as with the wrong material facts. There is not a single local election in this country or elsewhere in the United States, in Europe, the governing parties do not 
get less than what they got in general election. In midterm elections, Obama get less, or Republicans get less, or in Europeans. I mean, you, you have to compare local elections with local elections. This is a crushing victory. We have never seen in our history in a local election a party gets this much vote, 46 percent, 45 percent votes. It once happened in 1960s, but voter turnout was around 39, 40 percent. So it's a crushing victory uh, for, the, for the local elections. If you have a regression from that local election to general election, you will definitely get uh, more than 50 percent with this local election victory. But Taha, who won? When people went into the polling booths, do you think they were really thinking about their local representatives or was this, as everyone was saying, rightly or wrongly, a referendum on, on Prime Minister Erdogan? All of them was in it. All of them was in it. But at the end of the day, local elections, local candidates, local issues, families, uh, interests, everything is in it. I mean, when you add all these up, you have this result. Same thing goes with the opposition parties. But the problem is we have a one party which runs in all over the Turkey, and we have three opposition parties. They only run three different regions of the Turkey. So literally, they are not exist. Turkey is a seven region in six or five regions. They are only exist in a single region. So AK Party literally giving a fight in a different, uh, three different uh, arena. Mm. Uh, in the Aegean uh, part of Turkey with main opposition party, in the Mediterranean part of Turkey with nationalist party, and the southeastern Turkey with the pro -Kurd party and in all regions the ruling party is either the first or the second competitor for the election when it goes to opposition you don't see that picture that is what's making this 46 percent and opposition parties 28 percent and the 15 percent Barshin Yunanch in Istanbul let me bring you in Taha called it a crushing victory what do you call it I do think that this is a big success uh, for the ruling party and for the Prime Minister Erdogan because uh, everything that could have uh, given a big blow to a party in the government has taken place in Turkey. Corruption allegations, um, leaked audio recordings, very humiliating. Um, there has been mass uh, demonstrations uh, on the streets. Um, despite everything, the fact that uh, the ruling party could get 45 percent is uh, definitely uh, a, a success. Now, whether the Prime Minister will be peacefully able to govern the country, that's another question mm. we can we can discuss. But mainly the, the AKP um, constituency, they have, uh, I don't think they have um, uh, sort of uh, condoned the corruption. Mm. They just weighted their gains. You know, they felt that, you know, they were the underdogs of this country. But with the AKP, they felt that they have become equal partners in this country. With CHP and MHP, the opposition parties, they were not able to convince the AKP uh, constituency that uh, that uh, they understand their needs, they understand uh, their values. Which kind of, Barchin, brings me back to my uh, original question that I put to Fadi in London, the idea that, and, may, and maybe I'll put it to you this way, all those things that you mentioned, the protests and, and the, the corruption, all these things, were they overstated in the end? Was the media as much a part of this as anything? All of that was overstated and we missed the fact that AKP had a lot of support and Prime Minister Erdogan had a lot of support. Uh, well, at the end of the day, let's not forget that uh, one out of two people did not vote for the AKP. And these were, in mm -hmm. fact, those who were in the street. And those people were actually not questioning the legitimacy, the ballot box legitimacy of the AKP. They were questioning the moral legitimacy in the sense that they were saying, fine, you got half of the votes and you are entitled to rule the country. But while you are ruling this country, don't ignore our uh, way of life. Don't ignore our views and be the prime minister of this whole uh, country. So it doesn't mean that these uh, demonstrators that went to the street, they backed up and they haven't voted. Um, in fact, they were representing mm -hmm. uh, the other half of the country. Um, but for the rest of the country, uh, for the AKP voters, a ban on the Twitter, a ban on YouTube, um, you know, all these corruption allegations, it was not uh, such a primary importance because mm. they went to the ballot box saying this is our party, this is a war of existence, this is our lifestyle, our conservative values being challenged, and we're not going to let the other uh, lifestyle, the other parties uh, get over us. Fadi, if as Barchin was saying, issues like Twitter and YouTube weren't important in the end when people went into the ballot box. What were? 
What were the important issues other than party loyalty? Is it things like the economy, the fact that ACT Party's actually done a lot for the Turkish economy in the last few years, jobs and the like? The number one uh, and the critical issue for the majority of Turkish voters is the state of the is the, per, the is the public's perception of the state of the uh, economy, mm -hmm. and on that score, we have seen some deterioration of the numbers. Uh, uh, surveys indicate some deterioration regard for Erdogan, Prime Minister Erdogan, but a small deterioration. So it's no surprise that he's managed to keep the majority of support, but still lose five percent of the uh, nationwide uh, uh, vote. I think going forward from here. Where the Turkish economy has entered the middle income trap. It is now uh, personal incomes are stagnating. Uh, growth rates are stuck between around 3% at maximum. So therefore, I think the, the slippage in Prime Minister Erdogan's popularity will continue, but at a slow and gradual p pace, because Turkey is witnessing an economic slowdown, not an economic recession. Okay. Stay there for me, all of you, just for one moment, because I want to bring in some other issues uh, for our viewers to talk about. Because I think what makes the ACT Party strong showing even more impressive, if we can use that word, are the number of potentially damaging issues which were around going into this election. And our guests have already mentioned some of these. I do just want to take you through them again. It was a campaign dominated by a series of corruption allegations implicating senior government officials. The ACT Party says they were cooked up by supporters of the Muslim cleric Fethullah Gulen, who's living in exile in the U.S. state of Pennsylvania. Erdogan responded by purging the police of people thought to be sympathetic to Gulen. Then, following a series of sensitive government leaks, court orders shut down Twitter and access to YouTube was partially blocked as well. We heard about that. And the election, of course, followed months of sporadic protests in Turkey against Erdogan's rule. Biz, Pennsylvania. We will not surrender to Pennsylvania and their offshoots in Turkey. From tomorrow, there may be some who flee. There are some who have already fled. And I've personally filed a legal complaint against some of them. I warned that they could flee. We will enter their lair. They will pay for this. They will pay the price. Fadi, could you just do me a quick favor before we get going with the, uh, with the conversation or the debate about uh, Fethullah Gulen, this Muslim cleric in Pennsylvania who Prime Minister Erdogan referred to there. Can you just explain briefly uh, who he is and why Mr. Erdogan so upset at him? Uh, Fethullah Gulen uh, um, is an uh, is a Islamic, a reclusive Islamic cleric who is now living in Pennsylvania, United States. He established a, his group in the uh, in the 70s, uh, helping uh, the poor, helping the uh, helping um, uh, the university students to find lodging and so forth. He created a, uh, a, a group. He created a an avid uh, group of avid uh, supporters who, over time, uh, penetrated some of the Ministry of Interior, the police, the intelligence services, the prosecution uh, teams. He entered in a, into an alliance with Prime Minister Erdogan during the the 2000s uh, to defeat the the military establishment and the former secular. Uh, establishment. Now that the uh, that objective uh, was achieved, they now are in, in a state of war against each other. Mm. Uh, definitely, yeah. Taha, I'll bring you back into the conversation here. I think Mr. Erdogan's language is interesting there. Just to repeat what he said, we will enter their lair. They will pay for this. They will pay the price. I mean, is that the words of a strong man that people react well to, or is he potentially getting a little bit too uh, strong with his rhetoric there? I mean, I'll come to that issue because it was quite important. I sure. mean, when you're analyzing these elections, like you're uh, having your Al Jazeera broadcast. I mean, you cannot have 24 hours headlines. That's why you need this inside story program. Of course. When you say corruption, it's a headline. But you have to go to what? Dynamics of that corruption. How do people perceive it? And what was really happened? It happened on December 17th. The headline was a corruption. Then suddenly we learned we're talking about at least 10 to different cases. Has nothing to do with each other. Each other. Uh, most of them started one and a half year ago. And then later we learned uh, many people in this country, hundreds of thousands of them, I'm not exaggerating, and I am one of them, has been wiretapped and our phones are listened. Then people started to get the, or grasp the reality of Gulen Group, who is, uh, impo uh, who, is, who, who is available in the state, especially mm -hmm. police and the judiciary, is organizing this type of uh, setups. 
And uh, Erdogan once uh, allied with them, I should say, mm -hmm. between 2006 and late 2009, uh, reacted harshly. And this has been going uh, in the, through all uh, election campaign. As uh, Barchin uh, said uh, truly, uh, during the last two and a half months, the opposition party's main mistake was uh, putting their own campaign aside and using all the documents, mm -hmm. all the leaks, wiretaps, uh, videotapes uh, leaked by this group to opposition parties. People uh, felt discomfort out of this politics because people evaluate Gulen Group as a non-political actor. They suddenly discovered they are very much powerful in the police and the judiciary. And to make a case in this country, you need a police, uh, prosecutor, and judge. If you have three of them in line, you could make any case in this country. Then suddenly we started to question all the cases happened in this country last five years, mm. uh, starting by uh, neo tutelage actors in military, judiciary, Ergenekon case, and etc. So right now, Turkey facing with this reality, state in state, and this is not a new thing. And this has been very available in 1990s. And this is a new phenomenon. What makes it new, it's headquarters in the United States. It's a leader living in the United States. Uh, supposedly, they are an Islamic movement uh, and giving a fight against so-called uh, Islamic rooted party. So this is a dilemma. And people mm. felt very much threatened through this uh, tension and reacted positively what Erdogan said. And right. we, we saw that thing in the election result. Right. So when, uh, Barjan, why don't I ask you about this? So when we heard or when the electorate heard, uh, and, and this was, I think this was a feature of the campaign, really, the way that Prime Minister Erdogan spoke. He was very vehement and strong in his language. Did people respond well to that in the end? They like the idea of a strongman leader. Well, uh, for half of the country, that's that's right. Mm, I mean, uh, there is um, his his style um, of um, addressing people um, is has is definitely a very positive point as far as the prime minister is concerned. Masses on the street they identify themselves with him. He, they feel that uh, they are one of them. Uh, uh, actually, all these uh, leaked uh, audio recordings were supposed to uh, um, prove otherwise that he was no longer uh, representing the poor sectors of the society, that he was after making more money and getting houses for themselves. But this, this campaign has not uh, proved uh, successful among uh, the voters uh, of the AKP. They, have, they feel a strong allegiance um, to Erdogan, as I said, because they feel that they are one of them, whereas the opposition parties are extremely unsuccessful of um, setting up a relationship based on confidence. The AKP mm. voters are afraid that if AKP loses and the opposition parties comes, they will again go back to their underdog position. Mm. So the opposition parties are not successful on establishing this uh, relationship based on trust, saying, no, we will understand your requirements and your needs. But they are not, they are seen to be MHP, Nationalist Movement Party, is seen to be an anachronist party because let Let's face it, the AKP voters have sort of given their consent to the Kurdish reconciliation process as well, mm. uh, whereas the CHP is still being perceived as an elitist Republican secularist party who doesn't understand the needs of, of uh, the deprived uh, uh, social classes in Turkey. Let's start looking ahead. I'm putting this to all three of you, and I'll get thoughts of you from one by one, but we have to start looking ahead to presidential elections in August. A few important things to note. One, it will be the first time that the Turks, the Turkish people are actually voting for their president. But, correct me if I'm wrong, the role of president in Turkey is a more ceremonial role than that of the prime minister. So, Fadi, let me come to you first. If Erdogan decides to run for president, one, do you think he would get there? And two, what will become his role in Turkish society, in Turkish life? I think that uh, Prime Minister Erdogan has a very good chance to win the presidential elections in the summer of this uh, year. Uh, simply, he has now at least 40 to 45 percent uh, in his uh, uh, supporting him, and he can get the rest from the uh, Turkish, uh, from the nationalist uh, vote uh, in the country. Uh, I think that it's true to say that the prime minister position is much more powerful than the presidential, than the presidency, 
uh, in uh, Turkey. My suspicion is that Prime Minister Erdogan will try to put a relatively uncharismatic figure as Prime Minister mm. so that he will enlarge the importance of the presidency in the same way we saw in the, uh, in the late 80s, early 90s under former uh, Turkish President Turgut Özal who installed an, an uncharismatic uh, Prime Minister, Yildirim uh, Akbulut. It's almost sounding to me actually like what happened in Russia a few years ago, the swaps between uh, Dmitry Medvedev and Vladimir Putin. Am, am I too far off the mark there, Taha? Would that be that type of thing do you think Mr. Erdogan might try to do? I mean, yes, uh, the, your, your analysis and connotation usually made in Turkey uh, by whom usually accuses uh, Erdogan being Putin but they <laughs> want him to be Putin by exchanging with Abdullah Gül. That's another thing. <laughs> but uh, what we had on March 30th was the first round of presidential election, and it's done. Right. And we will see second round in, 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 in August. I, I should add a, what, another material fact, something different. As you, you, you just said, uh, presidential position is a ceremonial. Mm. Uh, it was, it was, but it is not right now. After the change in the uh, election system, right now president will be elected 50 plus votes. So it's no more, uh, I think it's a symbolic uh, position. And I asked this question to Erdogan uh, two years ago uh, on TV show. I said, what will happen uh, if a president elect elected with 50 plus votes and government, let's say 45%? He said, I cannot say there wouldn't be any crisis. So there is an administrative, if not crisis, issue here to be mm -hmm. resolved. Uh, some kind of readjustments should be done, to my uh, opinion. Uh, but if it's not going to be done, a uh, president will be elected with uh, a, a good amount of authority, plus uh, more votes than any government in the, in the, uh, in, in the prime ministry. Mm. So it will create some uh, troublesome uh, issues in, in, in the future of Turkish political uh, scene. Barshan, you've been very good at reminding us throughout this discussion that it is a party situation and that a lot of other people did vote for other parties. However, as we're talking about this idea of president and, and possibly President Erdogan, I would like your thoughts on that. How do you think, as I say, and, and I'm using this uh, crystal ball gazing here, I guess, but how do you think President Erdogan would rule in Turkey? Uh, well, I don't want to speculate whether he will become the president or not. What Fair I enough. can say is that he is going definitely to be a predominant actor. AKP is there to stay. Erdogan is here to stay. Um, you know, uh, both will be a, an important actors in Turkish political life. But uh, what's important here is to see that as long as um, uh, Erdogan continues to um, ignore uh, half of the country, as long as he has this condescending look on those who have not voted for him, the country is set for tension. Because as I said, people are not um, questioning his ballot box legitimacy. They are questioning his moral legitimacy. There are serious uh, corruption allegations. And uh, these uh, corruption allegations will continue to haunt him. Uh, this His authoritarian tendencies will receive reaction from the people. And people would, would seek civilian methods, legal methods, mm. to challenge his authoritarian rule. Fadi Hakura, last question to you. Just starting to run out of time. Your final thought on where Turkey heads to from here. I think Turkey will enter a, peri a prolonged period of instability. The economy now in Turkey has slowed down. The golden years of the Turkish economy are over. Uh, I think that uh, because of that, uh, Turkey will have political, economic uh, instability, as well as external challenges, namely Syria, uh, Iraq uh, and Iran. And Taha, just a final word from you as well. I think uh, Fadi's made the good point about the economy. Is that something that we really have to look at in Turkey uh, going forward for the people? I mean, his last comment was about that Turkey is going through instability. I think it's an exaggerated comment and he's been doing, unfortunately, the last five, six years. There will be uh, problems in economy, but they are not going to be uh, uh, a crisis, I believe. And it, it's always a chance still in Turkish economy to uh, recover what it was and this year growth was good enough to uh, make those uh, challenges to meet with uh, policies uh, after presidential election i think we are going to have an open avenue to mm. reevaluate whatever we had through last two years in turkish politics so uh, i think the tension will continue as they are expected i agree with them but after presidential elections, we will see a relaxation in Turkish politics a little bit. Looking forward to those presidential elections. I think they're going to be interesting, aren't they? Taha Ozhan, 
Uh, Fadi Hakura and Bajshin Yunaj all joining us on Inside Story. We thank you so much for your time today. And of course, we thank you, our viewers. We're always keen to hear what you think as well. Look us up on Facebook and Twitter if you like and join the discussion. We'd love to hear from you online. I'm Kamal Santamaria. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again soon.